Greetings, creeps, and welcome to Convo Fango. Today, we are joined by writer-director Christopher Landon and the stars of We Have a Ghost. We've got David Harbour, Jahi Winston, and Anthony Mackey. Let's get right to it. First question for you. Uh, if you came back as a ghost, who would you most want to haunt? My enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a long list? Do you, like, unfurl a scroll? Yeah, I don't know. It, would, I, I, it, it could take some time, but yeah, I get around to it. <laughs> no, I would love to like, it would be so, by the way, probably my sister, uh, <laughs> because she and I grew up watching horror films together. And so I would love to just scare the shit out of her. That is such an ultimate brother answer. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's fair. I like that. <laughs> Um, so this movie is very funny, which so much of your work is, but it also centers on like second chances and empathy and it serves up a whole lot of heart. Um, Kevin's empathy for the entity in particular is something that catches Ernest, the ghost off guard and kind of launches this whole adventure. Um, is empathy a core theme in the original story or is that something you built in? Is it a fusion? Uh, I mean, I think it was, there were traces of it there. I think the I think the short story was a little less interested in in that, um, but um, but like I said, I think the kernel was there. I was just very taken by the relationship between this young kid and a ghost, and how they really find common ground, and how they see so much of each other. As you know, especially like Kevin, who at the beginning of the story, or especially in the film, is is a bit of a ghost himself, um, and I think that's a very relatable theme for a lot of people, because I think a lot of us kind of move through life sometimes feeling like no one really sees us. Mm -hmm. um, and he he just forms this really special bond with the ghost. Are there elements of you in Kevin? Like, is that kind of like, does that mirror your teenage years at all? hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, you know, the, one of the early scenes with Kevin, you see him sitting alone in a hallway, you know, eating his lunch. Um, and that was me. I mean, I, and especially in high school, I had a tiny, tiny group of friends. We ate our lunch every single day in an empty hallway away from everybody oh. else. I was a loner and shy and all those things. And so, yeah, I definitely put a lot of myself into Kevin. I would have sat with you guys, or I would have asked to you sit totally with you. Maybe would have be sat like, with no. us. <laughs> <laughs> I would be in the hallway game. <laughs> Um, aside from the empathy element of it, I really like that it's kind of, it's a love letter to dads. And I, I have, I, I don't know, that hit me. I got a soft spot for that. My dad is like such a horror dad. So that was a really cool element of it for me. It's something I would want to watch with my dad. Um, was that particular aspect important to you? That was really important to me. I, you know, after I became a father, I have two boys. Um, I really started to think about my relationship with my dad quite a bit, you know, and started to see things differently. Like sometimes some of the things that I held on to, some of the resentment that I held on to, I started to realize, oh, like this dad thing's kind of hard. Like it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. And and sometimes you make mistakes when you think you're doing the right thing. Um, and so that was something that was really important to me that I really wanted to to have very present in in the movie, you know, or these sort of complex relationships between fathers and sons there's this very honest conversation in the movie as well that takes place kind of about like as you get older you realize your parents are also just just people and kind of like if they're when you realize that they're kind of coming at it trying to do their best it's it's a little more forgivable like it's mm. good we're gonna fuck up sometimes but it's like if they're coming from a place where it's like I'm trying to love you the best that I can and I want the best and it's just but you're also a human and it's a weird shift I think that happens when you get to a certain age and you realize your your parents are people it's yeah kind of a weird thing <laughs> yeah yeah and that's obviously something that 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 Frank you know played by Anthony Mackie really kind of faces head on at one point in the film, you know, it was just talking about that experience of talking about like how at a certain point your kids become adults, you know, mm -hmm. and they see you for who you really are um, and how that can be both sort of rewarding and painful. Absolutely. Um, the social media commentary of this all was uh, realistic and funny and painful. Uh, like, for instance, the the earnest challenge. I absolutely hated it. Like, I'm a ghost. I'm going to run into a wall. But I'm like, that's exactly what it would be. That's what would happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's it was look, it was an opportunity to to poke fun at social media culture, um, the dumb things that we do, um, the way that we fight about everything even when we don't need to fight about it, you know what I mean? Like just right. how polarized we are. And so, um, you know, it's it's kind of an easy target, but it was a lot of fun to poke, to poke fun at it. I'm unfamiliar with that. What, what do you mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally. I'm, I'm curious about the look of the ghost, not just like, like de-hopper-fying him as far as like his clothes and his hair, but also just kind of like, 
like it, like the ethereal elements of it like did you play around with that where you're like okay let's a little more glow on the shoulders or like tone it down or like bring it up more like what was that conversation like that conversation was long it was a <laughs> long conversation that went on for quite a while look I, I what i knew what i wanted was i wanted to i love this idea that that a, that a ghost is is made of energy you know mm -hmm. and so um at one point we'd even played around with the idea of like being able to see tiny like little moving particles um but I I really wanted to try and figure out, and the balance was, how do I protect David's performance mm -hmm. and not make it look so distracting that you're taken out of the film, um, but also remind the audience that he is a ghost. And what's crazy about this is that, you know, because I wanted the ghost to also be very environmentally interactive. And so like when he would step into a shaft of light, he was he looked different, you know, mm -hmm. than if he were in shadow. So it was a lot of nuance. And I mean, we're I'm talking about like shot by shot basis. Like we would modulate every single shot many, many, many times until it felt like it was right. It was a year long process. It was it was a lot. Man, there's such a balance that has to happen with that too, because when you have an actor like David Harbour, like that's not just like, oh, we have, you know, this guy that we really like is playing a ghost. It's like, no, people are going to be really excited to see David Harbour and yeah. he's not using his words. So you got to really like focus on the nuance of his face and his movement. So you have to make sure that's visible, but then also convey that he's your version of a ghost. But I think you guys nailed that balance. Thank you. There. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about TV dads earlier. Who are some of your favorite kind of like pop culture dads? I'm, I'm sure your dad makes the list. Number right? one, my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's funny. Like people think that, but like he wasn't my favorite TV dad because he was, he was my dad. And right. so like the version of him on TV was never the person that I knew. Yeah. Um, there were similarities, but not, not the same. Um, I mean, my God, there were so many like from like, uh, well, the, well, Oh God, I can't say that one. <laughs> That's the dark side of it. Is that like some of your favorite TV dads turn out to be horrible people. Right. I, I, I have a guess of maybe who it was because yeah, that was like, like front was of my mind. That was like oh, no. super top of mind, but I was like, oh God, that didn't end up well, did it? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, day, it's like a minefield now. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know what? We'll just go ahead and skip that because- Next question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I think we're out of time, but we are obviously very big fans of you over here. So <laughs> just congratulations on everything. And I'm excited for everyone to see We Have a Ghost. Uh, if you came back as a ghost, who would you most want to haunt? Oh, God. <laughs> who would I most want to haunt? Yeah. I think I already do. I haunt my children. <laughs> I just have kids. Just constantly haunting them. Get off those YouTube shorts. Get off the TV. Yeah. That's a very dad answer, but that was the most dad phrasing also. Get off the YouTube show. Get off the YouTube. You kids watching the YouTube again? You on the YouTube and the TikToks playing the <laughs> yeah, exactly. foosball? The computer? Yeah, the interwebs. The interwebs. Oh my god! Okay, I also need that movie. I need that to be the sequel. <laughs> there you go. I love how this interview has just become like David Harbour screaming things. You'll just <laughs> chop it up together where it's like, watch more horror, the interweb. I'd watch that. This is I exciting. Would, that's going to get so many hits on the TikTok and the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are some of your best bowling team names? You have a cute name that you get to wear on your cute little bowling shirt. So I'm wondering, yeah, you know. Banana splits, right? Yeah, that's a good one. What, what are my bowling bowling team names? I think they're just like, um, you know, they're just like uh, bro Broken Hearts Club, I guess. Okay. I just always think about getting bowling shirts whenever I, uh, whenever I've had bad breakups in the past. I feel like I just got to go out with a bunch of other dudes and go bowling. Is that like the equivalent of like when girls get bangs and you know they've, they're going through some shit like you, oh shit, David's got another bowling shirt. Exactly. He's That's off bowling again. <laughs> Clearly she broke up with him. God damn, oh, that no. poor guy. <laughs> now I want to see the collection of your bowling shirts. It's just yeah, like a... See, there's a bunch of them. It's about nine of them and they're all lined up different colors. Okay, there's eventually got to be like a like a show. It's like a fashion show, but it's just an exhibit of like David's yeah. bowling breakup shirts. That's a horror show right That's there. A... Watch more horror. Yeah.
<laughs> people would buy tickets for that. I mean, that yeah, would sell well, out. Kidding? Yeah. Limited, yeah. a limited edition one night only kind of engagement. People go nuts <laughs> for it. Mark my words. <laughs> um, this is a really like it's a really uh, sweet and tender story. It's very funny, but at, at the core of it, it's a love letter to dads. So, I, I was that part of why you wanted to do this? That's interesting. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I um, <laughs> I I wanted to do it because uh, it was a real challenge to not have any lines. I mm -hmm. thought that was really cool. But also for me, the the story was about kind of. Uh, like the fragmentation of technology and the family and then you're right like how this other character has to bring them all in i feel like et did it you know 40 years ago or however long it was and that we're sort of redoing it in a modern thing with modern technology mm -hmm. um and i feel like that's that was what attract attracted me to it was it has this simple vibe of like getting back to the things that are closest to us the things that are physically around us and having those things be important again was a very uh a fun theme of the movie i really liked absolutely so what i'm getting from this is that you've always wanted to play et and you finally got to <laughs> Yeah, that's the real, the real answer there. Watch more spielberg <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to ask you about, like, I imagine, I'm not an actor, but I imagine acting without your voice at all has to be like a totally different beast. Is that, is that fun? Is that, did you do anything to prepare? Like you could watch like old, like Buster Keaton or anything like. No, it's interesting. I mean, I did, I did watch some stuff like that, but it, it really, uh, it was a real challenge. And I did find that I had to do a lot more work than I thought. I mean, my friends all made jokes about how, oh, now you don't have to learn any lines. They're just showing up and they pay you. Well, I was like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> no. It's actually much harder. I know you think all I do is say lines, but I'm telling you it's much harder. Um, so I did have to do a lot of work, but uh, a lot of it came from the themes of the particular piece as opposed to other performance silent performances i mean i really focused on this idea of him being an other character like an alien in a sense but okay. really a throwback to a different world and in that yeah. way his silence and his stillness came out of that um and once i had that kernel it was sort of easy to find things like that but i, I didn't really go and look at like Buster Keaton movies. Maybe I should have though. That's a good <laughs> idea. Where were you a year you know, and a half ago? You can hire me for the next one is all I'm saying. No. You were watching horror. <laughs> I was out watching horror in E.T. on loop, baby. Yeah. That's all I do. <laughs> Spielberg and horror. It's all, that's my life. <laughs> So over the past seven years, you've kind of become like this international treasure, if I may say so, um, oh, an all time favorite TV dad. But I think you're also <laughs> kind of responsible for this rise in like dad kink, if, if I, for lack of a better term. And it's benefited dads everywhere. I thought it like, was Pedro Pascal, but I'll, I'll take it. I'll I think the, it. the two of you as a duo are, are very responsible okay. for this. Like, how do you feel okay. about that? Like. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I will, I, I mean, I'm confused as anyone, but you know, why should that stop anyone? Confusion's okay. The, um, I, I will say that I appreciate the fact that you can still find men who are out of shape and have a certain hairlines attractive. I'm down for that. Absolutely down for that. Well, I, I think the dads of the world salute you for your, exactly. for your service. Big, you know? big guys, big guys <laughs> with bad hairlines. No. We're back. We're back, everybody. I don't know if that's how anyone would describe it, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, David, this was no fun at all. Um, so this is terrible. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> for me neither. Uh, if you came back as a ghost, Anthony, uh, who would you most want to haunt? All of my ex-girlfriends, they're going to get it. They're going to get it. They, they will never have another uh, night of rest. I'm going to drive all of them crazy. <laughs> okay. On some poltergeist stuff. It ain't no me like a nice ghost. No, I'm straight up puking and like hitting the wall <laughs> and jumping out of windows. I'm cutting your brake lines. I'm doing everything. Wow. He's got feelings on this. Yeah, and Jahi is just. I'm going to my chest. 
right. I don't have any ex girlfriends to hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly no one that I would, you know, go that far. Um, I don't know. I don't really have any, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe my parents. That's cruel, but I just don't. <laughs> Okay, but to be fair, you don't have to cut their brake lines or puke on their walls. I mean, you could be yeah. like, like move a chair or something. I'm like, oh, we went real hard right out of the game. That's, that shows you how mean he is. He's going to haunt his parents. <laughs> I thought about it his after parents. like, that's so mean. Yeah. They're <laughs> grieving and I'm just like, yeah, oh. move. <laughs> Remember, you didn't take me to, to but David Buster. <laughs> <laughs> That's but true. it could also be like, ooh, mom, I'm haunting you and I made you some coffee. Like, you know, oh, I mean, you could be a, like a, a, a nice, nice ghost. Yeah, yeah so. there's, there's, you can do nice yeah. poltergeist stuff. If you're a nice ghost. I mean, I would be nice. Yeah. No, Anthony, no. you already gave your answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah hey, You see how you see? Right. Oh, you enough. didn't say, I'm like, I also didn't say you had to torture people, but I mean, <laughs> That's part of being a ghost, man. That's part of being a ghost. I mean, honestly, what's the point if you're not going to be puking on walls and cutting brake lines and stuff, right? Exactly. I mean, nobody wants to be Casper. <laughs> yeah. Know. Know. Ernest. Yeah. Come on. <gasps> no. Oh, we love some Ernest, though. <laughs> All right, uh, Jahi, if you could have a sweet phone number like two 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 poop, uh, what would your custom phone number be? Ooh, that's good. <laughs> Three, 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 Jahi, shawty. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wait, what was that? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Jahi, shawty. Jahi, shawty. Oh, my God, I got to notice. Jahi, shawty. There you oh. go. I like that. I, I would try to steal something like that, but I don't I don't think I would be able to even remotely pull that off. So. <laughs> Jahi. Anthony, what's what's your sweet custom phone number? <laughs> Mine would be 504 love. Oh. <laughs> I don't know his custom phone number, but I know what his voicemail would be. Or, oh, his oh. Man, <laughs> <laughs> I, oh no, 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 no. It would be 504 love you. Oh. Yo. Yo. We we all just did a collective groan. <laughs> That's it. Love you. Boom. You know what? That really long list of ex girlfriends is starting to make sense. Because <laughs> oh. I'm a lover and a haunter. Yeah, yeah there I you am. go. There you go, baby. <laughs> uh, Kevin's style is something that really stood out to me in this. He has just such a sick style. Is there anything that you would have wanted to keep from the wardrobe or anything maybe you did keep from Kevin's wardrobe? Or is that, or were you just like not about that at all? <laughs> Yes, no, that was great. Um, Whitney, our costume designer, she was super cool about letting me take what I kind of gravitated towards. <laughs> a lot of the stuff that I took, we didn't use, didn't make it to camera. So it was like, no sweat to let me have like the shirt. And, and during my fitting, I was like, yeah, I want that, I want that. I got my eye on that. And then by the time we were at production, I was like, yeah, like, this is my list, you know what I'm saying? If you can work something <laughs> out. And then also like his jewelry is is dope too. Like I, the earrings that I'm wearing now, actually, um, I got from I got from set because we didn't use them. So I was like, oh, I'm keeping these too. Come in clutch. Like I'm taking, I, I just went shopping basically. Like, did three, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just, yeah, so it was, it was dope, real freeloader style. <laughs> <laughs> Making the most of it. I mean, I you know, yeah. I love that. <laughs> uh, this story really centers on empathy, and Kevin has empathy for for the entity, right? And it catches Ernest off guard. Is that and that's sort of the key to like unlocking this whole ghosty adventure. Was that part of it important to you? Absolutely, it was very important to me it was also super important to Chris Landon, our director, for that to um, shine through, is that the the source of Kevin's um, desire to help Ernest and to protect him is empathy, is that he can um, really resonate and relate to Ernest's plight, uh, being an outsider and feeling alone. And um, I think that's something that I related to with um, Kevin as well, is sometimes you feel sort of alone and uncomfortable in your skin. And I think um, Kevin's pursuit of helping Ernest is um, really indicative of like who he is and um, the young man that he's trying to become. I love it. Anthony, who do you relate more to in this? Would you be like trying to exploit Ernest for everything you could or would you be trying to help him more like Kevin does if this was real life? <laughs> 
I relate to the family at the very beginning of the movie that was running out the house and peeling off. <laughs> the That's who I relate to. Like all that other stuff. No, I'm not hanging out with a ghost. Negative. No. That's fair. That's the smart answer. But we didn't get a movie about that family because they were like, bye, we're piecing out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, I'm actually that family, but I bring in the hardcore acting where I stay and I just live I with stay. the girl. Right. There's yeah. no way possible that's not happening. Nah, Anthony Mackey, nah. I'll go <laughs> Negative. Awesome. Um, this is also a really great kind of like a love letter to, to dads in general, which I thought was a cool. We don't get a lot of those, I feel like. We get a lot of mom movies. I'm a mama's girl, so I like that. But it was nice to see some dads get a little bit of love. Who are some of your favorite, like, pop culture, TV, movie dads? Do any horror dads make the list? Uh, well, you know, the greatest dad uh, to me is uh, Fred Sanford from the TV show Sanford mm -hmm. and Son, classic. Um, you know, there's nobody like Red Fox that does not say dad mm -hmm. like Red Fox. So mm -hmm. he is probably the most, the most disturbing uh, worst dad, loving dad <laughs> of all time. So for me, growing up watching that, I was like, "That's the dad I want to be. <laughs> I want to be the 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 angry, like curse you out, like don't talk to me, do all the wrong stuff, dad. <laughs> and you just clean up all the fires behind me in my wake." Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say um, Bernie Mac from the from the uh, Bernie Mac show. Nice. Was a, okay. Really, he seemed like a really fun, strict, but like a fun dad reminds me somewhat of my dad so Bernie I'm going with the Mac I'm going with the Mac, Mac. <laughs> double That's Mac double Mac I. action <laughs> thank you so much to Christopher Jahi Anthony and David for joining us today we have a ghost is streaming exclusively on Netflix February 24th Ooh.